I'm Andrew Harvey, and this is the third video in the series of login and reporting in VT Skeeda. Now, in the first two videos, I showed you how to configure the historian to save information, and also how to collect both raw and calculated values to save. Now, saving information, it's all well and good, but what really matters? Being able to retrieve that information later on to look at it. So, in this video, I'm going to show you the Historical Data Viewer, or HDV, and some of the tools that go with it. You'll see that it can do far more than just display a trend graph on the screen. There are several ways to open the HDV. The easiest is simply to point and click on a tag. Unless the widget has been configured otherwise, the HDV will open and show a trend for the tag linked to the widget that you clicked on. It does not matter whether the tag's values are being logged. If they're not, the graph will start from the moment when you click. But if you want to see what happened leading up to right now, well, then the tag must be logged. You cannot view a history that hasn't been recorded. You can add more tags to the graph just by pointing and clicking. You can also add digitals. Now, you can add as many as you like, but it doesn't take very long before the graph becomes crowded. One thing you can do to ease that is to separate the graphs. Now, a relatively new feature for opening the HDV is that from the tag browser or from the alarmed screen, you can right click on any entry and there will be a plot option. Now, from the alarm screen, this gives me an easy way to see when this tag went into the alarm state. It's even easier if I go into the pen properties and choose to show alarms. When I click OK, lines will be added to the graph for the alarm set points, color coded according to the alarm priority yellow for high, red for critical. Now, let's take a closer look at the tools and options in the HDV. Across the top are a series of buttons. We'll start with the time span. You can choose to view a graph showing any time span from seconds to years. To focus on a particular moment in the past, use the calendar to go back in history, or if it's on the screen, use the zoom in x-axis to focus on any particular time you wanted to see. That does two things. First, it changed the selected time span, and it also paused the graph so that I'm looking at one set amount of time. It's not scrolling off with new values coming in. If I want to see the live data again, I can click the Resume Live Mode button. You can also zoom in or out on the Y axis. Click the appropriate magnifying glass, and then click on the screen. If the graph goes off the screen, you can use the Shift button to move it up or down. And then when you're completely lost, you can use the Reset button to bring it back to a full scale. As you move the cursor back and forth, the value under the line will be shown. Now be careful about that. Depending on the time span shown, a pixel might be between two logged values and thus show an interpolated value. Or each pixel might represent 20 or 50 logged values and therefore be an average. I mean, unless the time span is a perfect match for the login rate with every pixel corresponding to a distinct logged value, well, then the numbers shown do not and cannot represent the actual logged values. Now, you can mitigate that somewhat by going back to the tag properties and choosing to add plot peaks. If you do that, then the graph will show three lines, one for the average, one for the maximum for all the uh, recorded values under the pixel, and one for the minimum. They'll usually be very close together, but if they diverge, you'll know that something interesting happened at that moment, and you can zoom in for a closer look. Now, by the way, if you don't want to see the values while moving back and forth, then you can tell it to not show the marker line. If you need to see a label for any particular point, just point and click, and the label will be added. If there's more than one pen on the screen, you'll want to select it from the legend before you click. Now, those labels will print if I click on the pr print button everything that I see on the screen will go to my system printer. But the labels are temporary and I can choose to hide them. They'll also vanish if I close the HDV and reopen it. Now, a tag selector is also available. 
It might not be as fast as clicking on widgets on the screen to add them to the graph, but it's much more powerful, especially if you save groups of tags as named groups to choose from. Opening the Tag Selector button, I can see all of the tags that were chosen in that particular group. I can clear that list and then start adding new tags to view. There's a number of filters that you can use to limit the display to particular types of tags or even names. And I can perhaps say tag. a named filter to view just the tags related to whatever area I want. Now, limiting that to only my analog data sources and I have all of the tank levels. I could double click to add those to the list, but an easier thing to do is to do an add query and then the filter itself will be saved. All of these tags that match the query will be included in the graph. Plus, if I add a fourth tank later on, well, so long as it matches the query, it will be included by default. I'm going to save this group as tank levels, click OK and plot. And now I've got the ability to see my tank levels at any point in time in the future. Now, clearing the graph and going back to just the display that I have here, you can see that I've got minimized legend. If I was looking at only a single tag, I would have had a full legend. You've got control over that on a tag by tag basis whether or not to have a best fit, which is what I see right now, or I can choose for this red pen to display all scales. The other two go to the other side, but I can go to each pen in turn and choose whether or not to say all scales or just the best fit. You've also got control over a number of other properties, such as whether you want to have dashed lines, a thicker line, a different color line. If you tell it to track tag scales, it will simply use the tags minimum and maximum values. Oh, and another new feature only available in the most recent versions of ETSCADA is that you can preset a range for the HDV. Without changing the scaling of the tag, I can tell it that usually it doesn't go between 40 and 60. So we'll make those the limits to use in the graph. Now, viewing the grid instead of the graph is also very instructive. Note the options across the top of the screen. Right now I'm viewing averages for the last selected time span. In averages across 10 seconds at a time, I could view averages across a minute or five minutes, whatever uh, list I want. So enormously powerful feature. I could also choose to look at minimums, maximums, or very interesting, raw value. This gives me the actual log values for the, uh, the last 30 minutes that I've chosen. I can export that and save it to a file as any of a, an access database, an Excel file, a comma separated values file, or any ODBC data format. Then I could use those raw values in some other program, make a pie chart in Excel, add up the totals, do statistics, anything at all is open. Going back to the main screen, I don't even have to open the HDV to view a chart. I could go to my Idea Studio and choose to add the historian right onto the screen using as a, uh, a plot data or draw the entire HDV. Adjust the size of that, but I could also totally configure everything about this to include the legend or not to show in a time span. To change all of the colors, every single part of that is under your control to give operators as much control or as little as you want on the screen. That completes my tour of the HDV. Please continue on into my next video in the series where I'll show you how to use the reports page.